a guy that I think we were all looking for or a position we were all looking for Ooh, is defensive end. It's like, what are we going to do? Yeah, right. And so, hey, this one is is a sneaky little one. Marcus Davenport, who is not a headliner, but it's that's fine because we give him a one year deal. Um, he, I think he, where, where was he last at the Vikings or yep. at the Saints? The Vikings. Yep. Cool. yep. Um, I got a little bit on him. I can I can pull up right here and love to know your thoughts on him. Six six two sixty five. Yep. He's a pass rusher, less of like a pure pure pass rusher, more of a can set the edge type of guy as well. And yep. so you can see what he does here. He adds some depth to the defensive end room, which we know is Aiden Hutchinson, and then you've got Josh, Josh Pascal and Kaminsky who are more of the set the edge guys less pure pass rush right and, and because we are going to get rid of okora and harris i would i would yeah they're both free agents so so thoughts on this and is this significant enough to care about thoughts yes it's absolutely significant enough to care about and i think the reason one of the big reasons it's significant enough to care about is when you look at him those are he played opposite another pretty good player in minnesota right and I know everybody's screaming for Daniil Hunter, as you probably should be, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have to pay him 25 or 26 million over four years. And he's 29 years old. Marcus Davenport's two years younger. He's 27 years old. He's the same height. He's the same weight. <laughs> okay. Like these are the things that are, that are absolutely nuts to me. He ran the exact same 40 time. Mm -hmm. Right. He was drafted in the first round back in 2018 uh, with pick 14. So, you know, he has the talent there. He did not have a great season last year with the Minnesota Vikings. So we're probably getting him at a bargain rate. But the five seasons before that with the Saints, he graded out very, very well. Um, He graded out really, really well. And so when I look at this guy, all I can can. All I can think to myself is like, all right, it's in there. He's a solid player and he's better than anything we have on the edge right now. And he's not only one of those guys that's a great pass rusher. He can defend the run too. That's like right. these, these are the thing. I don't know what the deal's for, but if it's anything under 8 million, it is phenomenal. Like, yeah. and, and, and Go ahead. Sorry. And then well, I'll say I more. just want to say what you, you were saying here is don't forget who we have on the roster and that mm -hmm. you're, you're right. He's immediately better than Charles Harris and Romeo Quara. And yes, and I know that's not saying much and it's not like yippee, but at the same time, come on, we just we we upgraded at the, those positions. Those guys are gone. We upgraded. We got the bets guy from yep. Canada. From Canada. These guys are going to be back. Aiden Hutchinson. So we still need a defensive end. Nobody is, you know, like a we still need or want a mm -hmm. legit number two pass rusher. Absolutely. So doesn't everybody, but this one is just, it's a, it's a role player guy that can develop into and possibly be that other edge and just to have a chance right now. We have no chance of another guy coming off the edge. We just couldn't have, we never found it. Remember last year it was Julian Romeo, Charles, healthy scratch. You're playing healthy scratch. I don't know. Maybe you could play maybe. And it's just like, they're not good. So this guy could give us a chance yeah. for sure. No, he can give us a chance for sure. And I'm going to make kind of a, I'm going to make kind of a weird comparison here. Um, I'm thinking about another guy that as I look at what they did throughout their career with the start and all that kind of stuff, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Zadarius Smith. You remember him? Mm -hmm. um, you know, he played in Minnesota for a year. He played in Green Bay for three years, and he kind of had a slow start to his career, six sacks, one sack, five sacks, and then all of a sudden he kind of went off when he got in the right situation. Yes. And – I'm wondering, like, this is a guy who's always played opposite a good pass rusher. So he, that, that's what he's always done. And but when he has the ability to get single teams and things like that, it goes really well. Mm -hmm. I really do like it. I just wish I knew how much it was for, because if we ended up paying him a lot. I don't know. Here it is. It's it's a one year, six point five million dollar base. But it goes, it could to 10. Yep. And I think remember on these contracts, they're they're a lot of eye can candy, right? So Marcus Davenport would like you to say it's a one year ten point five million dollar deal, but it, that's with incentives, I'm sure, the way this is worded yep. here. So 
we know for sure it's that six point five million dollar base. So yep. Hey, and guess what? We hope it's a ten point five million dollar deal too. That's right. Because that means he balled out. He probably got ten sacks. We probably won a playoff game. We <laughs> I mean, like those are the kind of things. He probably played a certain amount of snaps, things like that. But here's here's the thing that I think about with a guy like Davenport. When when I hear comments like he's a role player, he's not a starter and stuff like that. Um yeah, I mean like good. Mm -hmm. You need those. You need rotation players. That's what the defensive line is. There's 15 edge rushers in the game, 20 maybe, that played 80% or more of the snaps. It's just not a lot. And we got one. We have Hutchinson. <laughs> we, have, we have one of those. So you need to put other guys in there that can be rotation guys. He's going to be better than Charles Harris right away. Right away. He's mm -hmm. going to be better than Romeo Okwar right away. You talk yeah. about Houston, who we all have some weird love for, right? But the coaches don't. Like, they don't right. want to put him on the field. He's a pass rush specialist. It's really nice to have a guy that you can put out there in any situation. These are the guys that hopefully, if they work out, end up winning you a lot of football games because they're solid players. That's Absolutely. where we're going with it. Thank you. Yes, right. And and I, I think, like we said, in the backdrop, I don't know if we said it in this video, but in the backdrop, we know we have to pay all of our stud core players at some point. And that's just, again, that's just something to be thinking about as we sign some of these, like you said, role players or backup guys or whoever this is, whatever you call those, they're still very important and can develop into and be better immediately than what we have on the roster outside yep. of Hutch. So I, I'm okay with this. This is day one of free agency. I want to say the first year Brad Holmes was here. I mean, I don't remember doing anything for, ever like it was yeah. like it felt like forever it was probably three days but i mean it's day one and we're making moves and we'll get to the carlton davis trade here in just a second but i'm with you i like i like that we just filled um needs because we talk about in the draft and i heard this said by another gm that you are never one player away in the draft or just in general so you go yep. you that's why you go for best player available and i get that but at some point you have to fill your needs and we have a need at guard we filled that with graham glasgow we have a need at defensive end of we just need a body anything at this point marcus yep. davenport fills that we still can will and add to that but let's yeah. just kind of fill some holes right now just in this early point and corner is is one of those and we'll get to that in just a second but for sure i'll get, let you have the last word on this video when it comes to filling holes and, and making sure that we've got more of that base so that in the draft we can just go ham and do whatever we need to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, thank you. I was actually going to talk about this. It's yeah. like, you're reading my mind up in here. <laughs> All right. Here's what I love. Where's Brad Holmes going to draft now? Who's he going to draft? Right. You, anybody, right? Oh, we need a defensive end. Well, we got one. Nobody thinks that he's like our long-term solution and neither does Brad Holmes. He signed him to a one-year deal. That's the thing with Davenport. We can afford a guy on a one-year deal right now. All right. Davis, who we're going to talk about in a minute, one year deal. But now we're not just pigeonholed where teams know at 29, we have to draft an edge mm -hmm. or we have to draft a corner. Teams don't know in the second round. Teams don't know in the third round what we're going to draft. We can just draft for talent and we can continue to fill in these spots with these rookies. I don't want Brad Holmes having to draft a specific position. I want him drafting the best player available. That's right. And we don't want to be worried about exactly. Oh man, we don't literally don't have a corner. We should probably take this one. Yeah. So I, I I'm, I'm totally with you. Okay. Let's switch gears. Really the main event sign or trade. Okay. Sure. So, 